Well, good evening. Welcome to another broadcast, Faith Baptist Church in Lagodi, Indiana. Another Wednesday night broadcast, may I add. Trust your midweek finds you doing well. Uh, here in the Midwest, the uh, snow, cold, all that mess. Uh, maybe some of you listening uh, in another area are dealing with that, and <laughs> you're fortunate. Uh, the Midwest is a very strange uh area weather-wise, at least in my opinion. Uh, I come from the Appalachians and it's pretty steady. What I mean by that, the summers were extremely warm, but without what you call uh, overly hot and humidity. You got some once in a while. It was an extreme situation when it got hot and humid. It got hot, but hot and humid, that's a whole different level. And uh, but the winters, the winters were pretty steady. You could count on it on a chilly winter with snow and then just steady and but winter was winter and summer was summer but here in the midwest you don't know we, we a couple of weeks ago it was 60 and i was walking around with a little light jacket and then uh, we've had minus four this year we've had uh, winters here are just bonkers up down up down you don't know what you're going to get and uh, in the summers hot and humid you know how that goes and but you didn't tune in to hear about the weather in the Midwest. Uh, I just sounded off a little bit, aren't I? If you had your Bibles, if you would go to Proverbs 25, and don't panic, we haven't started this study in Proverbs again. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we've started a series of messages that we call Human to Message series. And today we're going to look at anger. Uh, we're going to look at the subject anger. When I mentioned that, it made many of you mad. I just, <laughs> just kind of... Uh, joking a little bit, but uh, uh, Proverbs 25, 28 says the following. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. The first part, uh, part of anger management is self-control, right? Uh, now, we don't think much about walled cities. Matter of fact, you could get in your car and I could get in my car and in a couple hours I'd be in Indianapolis, a large city. Three hours, three and a half hours I could be in Nashville. Hour and a half be in Louisville, a large city. And, and there's no wall. You're not worried about entering in. Matter of fact, I could drive my car right down to Main Street of all those cities. Never anybody stop and say, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Uh, so we don't think much about walled cities because we have security. If I go to one of those cities, they have uh, city police, they have uh, sheriffs, they have state police, they have authorities that are, that are given directive to keep things in order in that community. Well, in the biblical days, that wasn't the case. You had your king and you had his army and that was about it. And uh, uh, so they would build fortified walls around the city where if you came into the city, there was a reason for it. Most every Old Testament story that you read, when someone entered into a city, they were noticed. They were noticed by leaders or somebody. What, what, is the, what is the cause of your coming? Now, back to that same story. I could get in my car and drive down Louisville, drive Main Street, park in one of the meters and walk out. Most people aren't even going to notice. They're just going to notice that there's a gray truck and, 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 and some gentleman got out of it and walked down the street, maybe to a restaurant or to a building. And that's about the, the limit of now we're going to say, wonder what he's here for. But that's what it was in the biblical days. So when you see those, uh, but you see this picture of self-control, uh, you know, everyone gets, uh, gets angry, right? Uh, so I'm walking on how to deal with anger. The Bible doesn't say uh, that, that uh Anger in itself is bad. It's how we deal with anger that is bad. Uh, and that's what we're told in Scripture. Uh, a recent study found that uh, over one-third of Americans said they deal with anger issues almost daily. Now, uh, to be honest with you, we all get angry, so 100% of us get angry, but there's a third of Americans that can't get over it. They're angry all the time. As a minister, I, I deal with a lot of people, as you imagine, in and out of homes, in and out of situations. 
And I've noticed that certain people, even Christian people, good Christian people, they would do a lot for you, but, but they deal with anger. They, they get mad easily. They are set off easily. And, uh, you know, it's been said that we're born kicking and crying, and some of us never get over it. <laughs> and that's the truth, isn't it? Uh, you know, we're in a culture now, uh, like my, my dad wouldn't have seen me and my brother be born, but... But in our culture, you know, they, they bring the, the dad in. I remember getting all gowned out, and you see the kids being born. And, and uh, you know, they come in crying, kicking, screaming, yelling, all those, all those things, if you would. And uh, they're not happy. They're not happy. They were, they were riding around with mother and, and, and comfort and, and re relaxation. Now they're... They came out of the womb, they're in this cold delivery room with all these voices and, and bright lights. I mean, their whole environment has been changed. And so, and, and that's what many of us, it's not the situation, it's the environment. Uh, you know, it's not possible to live peaceful and deal with anger. Uh, those two are interactive. You can't, you can't live peaceful and, and deal with anger at the same time. You know, that's an oxymoron. It has been said that anger is only one letter from danger. And that's true. Danger, D-A-N-G-E-R. Anger, take the D off. And so you're only one letter away. So, so, so we see how to deal with anger. First, we need to understand why you're angry. Maybe you're not angry at your spouse or angry at your child. Maybe you're angry at the boss or you're angry because uh, because of some besetting sin that you can't get control of or you're angry over something else and you're letting that spill out. Or maybe you're angry because you didn't get the promotion or you're angry because you feel the financial pressure. See, there's many reasons for being angry, but we, let it go. we need to concentrate on why we're angry before we can deal with our anger we got to find out why we're angry. And uh, we're to turn to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 4, reading 26 through 27. And it says the following, Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Did you see that? Uh, many of you uh, that are listening to me are in marital relationships. Now, every once in a while, I read an article. It was late, late last summer. And I think the couple was well-intended. Uh, but I just don't, I'm sorry, I just don't grasp what they were saying. That was a couple who said they had been married 20-some years. I can't remember the exact. And they had never had an argument. And... Uh, I, uh, I question that. <laughs> I can't help myself. I question that. But uh, now, our, uh, you know, I, I, I have a very loving, kind wife, and, and we have a great relationship. We enjoy our time together. But there, there's been periods in our marriage where we've been uh, angry at one another. Uh, you know, uh, we just have. And so the first thing that you do is admit. So first thing we got to do is admit that we're angry. You know, that, that, uh, it's not, anger itself isn't forbidden. It's just becoming sinful with our anger. Yeah, matter of fact, to give you a little relief, Jesus got angry. That was on a couple, three occasions Jesus got angry. Uh, that's recorded in Scripture. But we know he was without sin. So anger in itself isn't sin. It's how we handle that anger. And so uh, uh, we keep moving. You see, it takes this divine discipline uh, to be angry and not to sin. Ephesians 4, while you're in Ephesians 4, uh, read verse 30 with me and uh, through 32. And it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit, where you are sealed to the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, but put away from you, and be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. 
uh, very interesting uh, statement. Uh, forgiving one another as Christ uh, has forgiven us. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, has every right to be angry with us, doesn't he? He really does. Uh, he tells us uh, you know, to be faithful in this area and we're not. He tells us to be faithful in our tithes and offerings and many times we're not. He tells us to be faithful in our church attendance many times we're not. To be faithful to love one another many times we don't. You see where I'm going. And so we keep repeating the same issue over and over and over. And he doesn't get angry. Uh, he may chasten us, but even that's the love. The Bible says, for those that God loves, he chastens. I don't know about you, but he must love me a lot. <laughs> uh, for those that he loves, he chastens. And so we see that. And we need to understand the nature of our anger. There's a difference between legitimate anger and sinful anger. You know, we should get angry when innocent people uh, are bombed or, or, or little babies in the womb are, are, are slaughtered. Uh, those things are, are, are an anger point. But we need to do that without sinning. Uh, you know, we need to take a stand for the unborn, but yet, to be honest with you, if, if, a, if a young lady decides, okay, I'm going to carry this baby to fulfillment, we, we shouldn't shame her. We shouldn't look down on her. I mean, she's took the step we asked her to do. She's taking this baby for its full, uh, full uh, delivery. So the church should rally and be behind her. And, uh, uh, you know, that there's, there's a difference. We're angry about one thing, but yet we take a remedy to help those uh, that, that, that work through and our anger should never be one to seek uh, revenge. Revenge is forbidden all through Scripture. Uh, matter of fact, the Bible says that, that God himself, uh, don't, don't take vengeance. Now in the Old Testament, when I say all through Scripture, actually in the Old Testament, we see an eye for an eye and a tooth for two. And, and uh, there's probably all of us kind of like to see that uh, when we're angry, but how many of us be walking around uh, without an eye and, and, and toothless because uh, somebody uh, remedied it. You know what I'm getting at. And so, so we see that, you know, uh, we need to resolve to end our anger very quickly. Uh, it usually gets vented to those who don't deserve it, don't As I mentioned earlier. It gets vented to the spouse, to the child, to the dog, etc. Poor old loyal dog comes up to you and you're mad and uh, you kick him for being on the rug or kick him for licking your hand. <laughs> Get out of here, you say. Uh, uh, so, so we see that. So let's bring this, uh, this to close. We can see how to deal with anger. And we found that in Proverbs 25, 28. And now we're going to look at understanding why we're angry. Ephesians 4, 26, 27. And finally, uh, think before you respond. One of the uh, most of us, uh, say things when we're angry and, and boy we regret it and it comes back and it boils out. So, so look in Proverbs 15, Proverbs the 15th chapter, in the very first verse, and it says, A soft answer turns away anger, but grievous words stir up anger. It actually says turns away wrath, but it's the same thing. So uh, a situation can be diffused, or fueled by what we say. Uh, you know, it, when we're angry and we're lashing out with our tongue, usually the other person lashes out with their tongue. And so, uh, you know, the proverbial, think before you speak, uh, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath. Boy, isn't that very tough to, to say a soft uh, answer? You know, nothing stirs up uh, anger uh, quite like ill thought out words. You know, an illustration of that. When I was young, I I, I was uh, athletic. I know that's a challenge for everybody watching it, looking right now. You say, "Dude, you never athletic." Actually, I was. And uh, uh, so, when when I was involved in athletics, one time we were playing playing a pickup basketball game, and I had a friend that was just riding me and fouling me. He was very rough. He was always a rough guy anyways, but, but he played this pickup game very roughly. And then I had finally reached my limit. 
And boy, I took both hands and pushed back on him. And, and I was ready to, uh, to, to, to get into a physical confrontation. Uh, good old uh, teenage boy fist fight, right? I was ready. And uh, I pushed him and challenged him. And, and he was just like, uh, he, he, I'll never forget. I was mad. Now, if he would have taken a swing or if he would have said something smart, it was on. But instead, he said, well, Jimmy, I never knew I was doing that. He, he said, uh, you're my friend. I, I just want to play basketball. Let's just play basketball. Well, you imagine how bad I looked in front of all the other buddies. And so we went back to playing basketball. He started following me again, the same thing. Nothing changed. But what did change was my heart. It was his answer. You see, I, I handled it completely wrong. And... All he had to do was say one ugly word or take one swing, right? And it was on. But he didn't either. He gave a soft, kind answer, and it completely diffused the situation. I wish I could give the illustration and say I was the one that did that. <laughs> uh, you know, he did it right. I did it wrong. I, I, I would rather be the hero right now tonight and say, oh, boy, I put an end to that. But he put it into it with his kind words. And I'm glad he did, because he truly was a friend. And what, what an embarrassment it would have been to fight a friend, because to be honest with you, uh, if after we would have, we'd have went back to being friends. He truly was a friend, and he was so much wiser than me. And isn't that the case? Like, you truly do love your spouse. You truly love your children. You, you truly love people, and yet you, you, you give these rough words, these explosive words, and you blow the whole situation out. So let's all think. I'm challenging myself. I'm challenging you. Let's think before we speak. Uh, Will Rogers said, when you fly into a rage, you seldom land safely. I like that. I'm going to say that again. Will Rogers said, when you fly into a rage, you seldom land safely. Uh, so let's close this. Look deeply into the issue that's angering you. And remember, we're dealing with this. Uh, while you're in Proverbs, go back to chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. And let's look at the 16th verse. And it simply says, A fool's wrath is known, but a prude man covereth his shame. Uh, you know, uh, make a determination to do which is right. Uh, God will vitigate his people. God will handle this. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a challenge. I don't know about you, but I find this anger management. And, and I know many of you, if you don't know me personally, I'm for the most part not a very angry person. I usually can get along with most anyone in any situation. Very seldom uh, do I get angry. But it seems like when I do, I really can mess things up. Uh, I look back on, on, you know, it's like when I finally do get angry, it just like... A, uh, pressure cooker coming apart and and that's not good I, I need to deal with it uh, because you can't say well I only get angry two or three times uh, well that makes no difference if there's harm done and, and, and I'm, I'm speaking to myself as much as anyone well let's close this tonight thank you for tuning in very convicting for me I don't know about you uh, but if we all deal with anger boy wouldn't it be better how about our world how about our political world? How about our economic world? How about nation on nation? If we just all learn to deal with anger, even in athletics or whatever it may be, just manage ourselves and play correctly and, and, and do uh, our, live our life uh, correctly. Okay, well, we love you. We thank you for tuning in. Pastor Jim Lilly, Faith Baptist Church, Lagoni, Indiana. You can also tune in on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. for those of you that tune in. 11 a.m. you can listen live uh, to our Sunday morning broadcast or anytime during the week you can uh, uh, log in and, and that's, uh, that's there and you can listen to that message if you choose. And, uh, but we'd love to have you in person. Now if you want to come in person, we're at 205 East Main Street and we actually begin at 1045. Uh, it's not till the AM broadcast begins that it goes on the air, but we've already been uh, uh, assembled here for 15 minutes, singing, testimony, having a good time. And so if you want to come live, 1045, 205 East Main in Lagodi. If you ever want to send us a card or letter, 
Uh, it's uh, Faith Baptist Church, P.O. Box 374, and Lagodi, Indiana, 47553. Or you may call and you speak to someone here or leave a message and we'll get a hold of you as quick as we can. Uh, and that's area code 812-295-4024. Well, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for these people. We thank you for uh, each and every one that's tuned in. Lord, we ask that many people would hear from your word this week and help us all as we deal with this issue of anger. Father, we love you and we thank you for being our God. And we ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.